The Wind Blows, written and narrated by Isal Kasiwa. The waves pattered against the beams of the boardwalk. The water frothed against the wood, but dissipated with the rising tide. As it lowered, the waves revealed dead barnacles stuck to the rotting wood. The gray husks stacked on top of each other, increasing the beam's circumference multiple times its original size. Tanner watched the water rise again, concealing the mound of creatures. It seemed to swell higher than usual, as if inviting him in. Why shouldn't he? He took a step closer. The tips of his shoes hung over the edge. His big toe stuck out of the side of one. The water rose and rose, until it graced the bottom of the boardwalk. He licked his lips in anticipation. What if he did? One foot couldn't hurt. However, as he took a step forward, a strong gust of wind pushed him backwards, nearly toppling him. As if appearing out of nowhere, the weight of the crate he had been carrying returned to his hands. He righted himself, turning away from the edge of the dock and towards the ship. Maybe some other time. Hurry it up, boy, the gray-haired captain said. His greased hairdo was tied at his mid-back. The rest of it fell to the tails of his tattered black leather coat. His musky, smoky scent, though suppressed by the smell of the surf, invaded Tanner's nose. Tanner wasn't even sure that the captain even knew his name. He looked down at the box in his hands. Perhaps he should be grateful for this man. He had given him a job, at least. Not many people could say that. Though that appreciation often changed on a day-to-day -day basis. Tanner's foot caught on the boardwalk. He and the box he was carrying fell to the ground. The contents of the container resonated with a distinct metal ting. Preset. The captain shoved Tanner and checked the contents of the box. The captain did it in such a way that one might think some ancient relic was sealed within its depths, but it was only fruit, or at least that's what Tanner was told. As the captain stood, he looked the boy in the eyes with his snake-like beads. The captain had a habit of doing this to his crew members. Tanner had seen it many times before. Some men were brought to their knees by this gaze. Tanner, however, was unaffected by it. Unlike the others, it never seemed to pierce as deep as it was intended to. The old captain retracted his gaze and stared off into the distance for a moment, then walked back onto the ship. Tanner retraced where the captain looked. It seemed to him his gaze was locked squarely on the white tower that stood on the outskirts of the port. At the top of the structure was a large, glass-like gem. Once at dawn, once at noon, and once at dusk, it lit up. The sun had just risen. The gem at the top of the tower spun, as Tanner understood it. The mechanism that rotated the gargantuan rock was hand-cranked from the base of the tower by multiple men. As it picked up speed, rays of light shot out in random directions. With each consecutive ray of light, the speed of the rotation increased until the light encompassed the entire port. Tanner liked to think that it blessed the ships for safe travel. Not that he knew the real purpose behind the tower. He squinted his eyes. There was someone standing at the top of it. Their white cloak against the white stone made them hard to spot, but they were there. Tanner craned his neck trying to make out what exactly they were doing. What are you gawking at, boy? Get on or we're leaving without you, the captain said. Tanner, momentarily distracted by the captain's yelling, turned back to the tower to watch the figure. They were gone. The upper deck was a mess. Rotting crewmates propped themselves up on the sides of the boat. Their muscles were barely strong enough to hold them up. Black liquid dripped from their gaping mouths. Their thick pink lips swelled as if they were about to burst. One hung by his sleeve which had caught on the splintered railing of the dark wooded ship. His skin had turned a sickly gray. The man wasn't alone. Most of the sailors looked like corpses. Tanner had long since stopped trying to help his crewmates. It's not that he thought particularly ill of them or that he didn't want to help. In fact, he felt sorry for them, but he couldn't provide what they needed. Metal rattled from the wheel of the ship. The captain held the box Tanner had carried on. It hadn't contained fruit after all. The captain pulled a net filled with countless cans of quick, his preferred substance. The salt and pepper haired man waved the contents around as if he were their father, goading them with candy. Once we're out of here, you boys can help yourselves, he yelled. The corpse-like men jerked their heads. 
their collective attention linked together on the quick. The men drawled, Yes, Captain, and rose in unison, their limbs dragged behind them. They walked with their heads jutting in front of them, only leaning forward to propel their body's reflexes to step. The slightest rock of the boat threatened to send them flying overboard. Their bones cracked and their ligaments snapped as they slaved away at their respective duties. An intense hunger radiated from their bloodshot eyes, around which were dark, dark circles. It was as if someone had taken coal to their face, accentuating their sunken cheeks and hollowed eyes. How many days had they been awake? Didn't seem to matter to them, as long as they got what the captain promised. Quick. One pinky full and it made one feel like they had the best sleep of their lives. Not that Tanner partook in it. At least he didn't think he had. He couldn't recall the taste, the smell, or even what it looked like, so he concluded he'd never had it before. His entire existence was the ship. Even his dreams were of him working. He drew his dagger and pricked himself with his knife. Blood came out. He sighed. He was awake after all. Tanner pretended to help with the ropes. If there was even a single supervisor on the ship, they would have been able to see that Tanner knew nothing of knots. Not that the captain had to know that. Tanner turned over his shoulder. The captain seemed to be distracted by something off the side of the ship. Perhaps the anchor was stuck. Whatever it was, Tanner took the opportunity to slip away to the hold. As he crossed the deck, he passed some of his crewmates. They seemed to walk on a straight line, their gaze locked firmly in the distance. Tanner always wondered what exactly they were looking at. Perhaps they were in their own worlds. Did they imagine they were kings being fed grapes by beautiful women? Or perhaps they were on some sort of adventure in their minds. Or maybe they were merely in a void of nothingness. Tanner thought that was the most likely of the possibilities. Wherever these men were, it wasn't where Tanner was. Perhaps that was for the best. He preferred not to rest in the crew's cabin. The men never slept. Instead, they tossed and turned, their white marble eyes staring at the ceiling. Though Tanner was never in danger around them, their uncanny ability to never sleep unnerved him. So instead, he carved out a spot in the hold. His space was a crate, barely able to contain his standing height. Tanner knocked out the side of the box that faced the wall of the ship. The boy had positioned it in a way that it covered a porthole. Looking out of it, he saw the anchor rise. Soon after, the captain shouted something. Tanner figured it was an order to lower the sails. As the anchor passed the window, he saw the same hooded white figure from earlier, standing directly across from him on the dock. No, oh, in the reflection of it. They were right behind Tanner. The boy quickly turned, his hand shot to his dagger. No one was behind him. He turned back to the reflection. Maybe the figure was outside after all. They were gone. Was three days without sleep a long time? Tanner wasn't sure. He'd never heard of a single person other than the captain talk of sleep. Whatever the case, he was tired. Tanner slipped his back on the corner of his crate where he had placed a sack filled with sand as a cushion. The ship swayed from side to side. The steady rocking of the boat put Tanner into a trance. His head bobbed. Right before his eyes closed, he saw the white-hooded figure mirroring him on the other side of the crate. He looked up, and the figure disappeared once more. This time he knew he wasn't just tired. He saw it. He didn't get a good look at the face, but it was there. It was definitely there, right? Tanner stood to open the porthole to let in some fresh air. The confines of the crate often grew humid. Yeah, that was it. He just needed some fresh air. As he reached his hand up for the latch, words appeared on the fogged window, as if an invisible man was writing him a message. Tanner sounded out the words as they appeared. T-O-S. Toss. T-H. The. Q-U-I. Quick. A. N and set them free. Toss the quick and set them free. Tanner rubbed his eyes to make sure he wasn't seeing things. The message was gone. Maybe he was dreaming. Tanner pricked his finger with his dagger. 
blood rolled down his hand. He stared down at the trickling crimson liquid. He was awake. The boy put his other hand to the window. His fingers left prints onto the fogged glass. He continued wiping the porthole, as if the message was hidden behind an extra layer of residue. It wasn't. He was sane. He was sane, right? If he was, then who or what was that figure? Was the figure still on the ship? The boy peeked his head out of the top of the crate. Wherever it was, Tanner couldn't see it. He crept out, lowering the lid of the crate as to not make a sound. His eyes were used to the dim light of the hold. He often felt more comfortable in cramped spaces than he did in open ones. A flash of light dashed up the stairwell into the upper deck. Tanner chased after it. Somehow he knew it had to be the figure. He rushed towards the stairs, leading to the upper deck. He skipped two, then three, then four steps to the top of the stairs. He stopped dead in his tracks at the door. Whatever the figure was, it had the manners to close the door behind it. Tanner had never seen the decks of the ship empty. He felt the lack of people more disturbing than the usual half-dead visages of the crew. When he looked up, he was astonished to find the cloudless night sky. Though Tanner didn't know the constellations, he knew that they were all visible at that moment. But it was morning only minutes ago. This revelation was quickly overturned by the flash of light that disappeared into the crow's nest. The boy climbed up the mast. He was going to get to the bottom of this so he could sleep in peace. When he reached the top, like all the other times before, the figure was gone. He slammed his fist on the railing of the crow's nest. Several splinters sunk into his hand. Drab! He cursed and recoiled his hand. He looked down at the spot. Something was carved into it. He attempted to read the carving, but lit a match to read it instead. Toss the quick and set them free, it said. Unlike the messages from before, this one remained. The carving was thin, as if etched out with the tip of a pin or a sharp dagger. Another flash of white appeared in the corner of his eye. He turned. The figure disappeared towards the captain's quarters. Tanner slid down the mast of the ship. He had to know what it was. The figure stood in front of the door. The top of their head crested the doorframe of the captain's quarters. White hair flowed out of the androgynous figure's hood. Their mist-like cloak billowed down to their bare feet. Faint layers of mist hung in the air around it. They beckoned Tanner towards them and giggled. Toss the quick and set them free. The voice flowed out to Tanner's ear like a soft breeze. Every syllable hung in the air for a brief second before joining the ambient sounds of the ocean. Tanner stood still, entranced by the being's presence. It beckoned him once more, then slipped under the crack of the captain's door as if it were made of mist. Tanner, too tired to question the implications of the figure's anatomy, followed after it. The captain slept in the corner of the room. The white figure sat on the nightstand with one foot propped up while the other dangled off. Leaning back, it picked up the netted bag of quick and dangled it from its long index finger. It covered its mouth to suppress a giggle. The captain, who laid nude, only protected by a patched wool cover, momentarily roused. The captain sat up with a moan. The white figure blinked out of existence, and the cans of quick clattered to the ground. The figure's laughter echoed through the chamber as they became one with the air. Tanner froze. Maybe if he stood still, the captain wouldn't see him. Neither moved. Tanner inched his way to the door, but as he tried the handle... Quick. Before Tanner could escape, something tugged the back of his collar, and in the blink of an eye, his feet were off the ground, and he was face to face with the captain. Ew. The captain growled. His breath crept into every pore of Tanner's face. He was unsure if the dampness was his own sweat or the dank precipitation of the gray-haired man's exhalation. The man gave him another one of his looks, the ones that brought grown men to their knees. For whatever reason, it didn't scare Tanner. He was calm. The captain raised him in the air by one arm. What are you doing in my chamber, boy? The captain spoke. Tanner ignored the question, peering at the white figure which once again held up the net of quick. Tanner's eyes returned to the captain. We were promised our quick once we left the port, the boy said. 
I would like my share. The captain narrowed his eyes. Fine. Have your fill, he said and placed the boy down. As the captain turned, the white hooded figure disappeared again, and the quick flopped back onto the captain's bed. The man handed Tanner a tin. For your hard work, he sneered. One second, the boy was looking down at the can. The next moment, it was open, and he held a handful of the black, chewy drug over his gullet. What? He didn't remember opening the can. He'd never had the urge to eat quick. He'd never even tasted it before, right? His mouth moistened. He licked his lips in anticipation. It was going to be so good. He could tell. How could he tell? He'd never had it, right? Tanner blinked and the contents of the can were gone. Where did they go? He searched the ground. Nothing. His hands were empty, too. His mouth was full. It tasted smoky. He bit down on the dry yet chewy substance. As the savory, almost jerky-flavored dip coated his mouth, his muscles relaxed. He could do anything. Had he had it before? It was so familiar. Yes, yes, he had. That was right. He knew this taste. Why had he ever thought otherwise? He loved this. The quick was what it was all about, why he slaved away every day on the ship. A bright wave of pleasure lit up in his chest and dissipated in the form of a sigh. This was living. This was what it meant to be alive. Tanner opened his eyes and found himself on the ground. The captain had returned to his bed. He chewed once more at the familiar, comfortable black goo. Why had he come to the captain's quarters again? He thought hard. Right, he came for his quick. He blinked, and the white figure appeared next to him. Right? That was it. And now he had his fill, and he could... A breeze came over Tanner's ear. Wait. Tanner spit the substance out. The black sludge of quick splattered on the ground. He scraped at his tongue. How did he get... Was he... Tanner felt the floor had fallen out from under him. What was happening? How could he even tell if what was happening was really happening? His head was splitting in two. He had to choose a sign to leave behind. What was he choosing? Why was he choosing? What was happening? The captain scoffed. Waste whatever you like. Makes no difference to me. From behind him, Tanner felt a hand on his shoulder. It glowed white with a pleasant warmth. He felt a breeze enter his ear. It said, Toss the quick and set them free. The boy nodded. He had made his choice. The figure giggled and pushed him forward. Tanner drew his dagger. Give it to me, he said. The captain sat up. The hell are you talking about? Have you lost it? You spat out your share. He sat up, eyed Tanner's dagger, then snorted. You have lost it. Tanner took another step forward. He held his dagger at his side in a low stance. The captain reached under his pillow and drew an ornate pistol. I can find another boy like you right off the street any time I want. So go ahead. Take another step. I dare you. Both stared at each other. Tanner clasped his palms around his dagger as if to ensure himself that the dagger was really there. From behind the captain, the white figure held the hammer of the pistol and giggled. Toss the quick and set them free. Tanner murmured under his breath and rushed forward. You piss at! The captain said. However, when he pulled the trigger, the hammer jammed. Tanner pounced on the captain like a cat, thrusting his fang downwards. The man raised his arm in defense and blocked the blow. You little shit! The captain said with gritted teeth. Tanner leapt off the captain and for the bag of quick at his bedside. The boy rushed out to the deck with the net in hand. The captain yelled from behind him, but it was too late. Tanner had already thrown the net of quick overboard. It descended into the depths of the ocean. As it sank, Tanner expected something to happen. He wasn't sure what he expected. Maybe a flash of white light to change everything? Something to swoop in? Nothing came. 
Bubbles floated up from the spot he had tossed the quick. Tanner had set them free. The captain's footfalls thrummed as if he were the heartbeat of the ship itself. The captain's form covered the moon. His arms were drenched in his own blood. Tanner had set them free. The captain drew the dagger out of his arm with a slight grunt. Tanner had set them free. The captain wrapped his fingers around the boy's neck. Tanner had set them free. The captain walked forward and hung him over the edge of the ship. Tanner had set them free. The hooded figure leaned against the mast of the ship and giggled. Its mouth moved and a gust of wind carried the message. Set them free. The captain released his grip. Tanner fell into the ocean. As he sunk, the white moonlight pierced the water, illuminating the bottom of the ship. Barnacles stuck to the black vessel. They were still there, countless scores of them. Tanner reached his hand out. If he could just... The tip of his fingers scraped against the bottom of the ship, dislodging a single barnacle. Tanner couldn't feel a thing. He reached out to the barnacle and held it in his hand. The boy sank, carried by the current of the ocean. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation of The Wind Blows, written and narrated by Isao Kasua. Owari.